Thanks for watching Lake 365, a show dedicated to getting you into the scene. From hot cars to power boats to everything in between, Lake 365 is sure to give you a taste of all the action. Take a look as we venture into some of the area's festivals and activities. We've been getting all the action. Are you ready? We're watching Lake 365. In this episode of Lake 365, Ozark TV's Deborah Wolf took a visit to Bagnell Dam. We met up with Alan Sullivan, a 30-year employee of the Bagnell Dam, and he showed us around. I am standing at the Ameren UE power station, and there's over 7 million gallons of water every minute going through the floodgates of Bagnell Dam. We're joined by Alan Sullivan, engineer for Ameren UE. And Alan, your grandfather helped build Bagnell Dam. He did. Uh, he and my uncle uh, came from the farm in Tuscumbia, and they made 35 cents an hour during the Great Depression to help build the Bagnell Dam here. That is phenomenal. And now, three generations later, you work for Emory and UE and have for quite a while, correct? If you talk to my uncle today, he would say, I built that boy a place to work. <laughs> and, <laughs> and thank goodness he did. And he uh, did, that's right. Because it has to be a remarkable place to work. Well, it is, and uh, every morning I walk in, I just feel totally blessed to be able to work here, and I've been here over 30 years, so it's a great thing. We were talking about right now, right behind us, there's over 7 million gallons of water every minute pouring through the floodgates, but then actually you were saying a total of over 23 million right. every minute that come through the shear. How do you explain that? Well, we have our, our turbines at full capacity and uh, then our floodgates at, at just a part capacity. And you notice we have 11 floodgates open. Uh, that doesn't mean we have a real severe flood. They're not open very wide. And so probably uh, one third of the water going down the river is coming through floodgates and two thirds is coming through our turbines. And so there's actually quite a bit more water than even just what we see circulating through the dam. Right, as much as it looks like coming through the spillways, that water still has all of its energy and it tumbles and boils and it's about 15,000 cubic feet per second. That's the numbers I'm used to working with. And then about 36,000 cubic feet per second coming through the turbines right now. At what, now how many days has the floodgates been open this year so far? We opened the gates uh, on July the 3rd, uh, really due to Harry Truman starting to evacuate their flood pool. And they stored uh, over 24 feet of water in their reservoir, which was equate, equated to the volume of the Lake of the Ozarks. They've dropped about seven feet since then, so we're gradually getting that water past through Bagnell Dam. And we expect uh, in about a week to be able to start uh, pinching down on our floodgates, and then maybe in two weeks be able to have our floodgates closed, pass all the water then through the turbines. And you were saying that you pinched them down to help conserve and keep the erosion down to a minimum on the shoreline. Right, we've done erosion studies that uh, have shown us that one of the factors that contributes to erosion is if the river is held up at high levels this long, the banks get charged with water, and if we drop the river too fast as that water comes out, the banks just fall off. So we're in cooperating with the Corps of Engineers to have a phased-in ramp down that will last about a week, and as we slowly drop the water, it's our hope that we minimize that erosion that takes place just due to the heavy banks falling off. Well, I know that having grown up now with this being your, the dam being your family for three generations, you know every nook and cranny of this dam, and you promise that you take me down and show me why it's okay for a dam to leak, right? Right. We have uh, we have construction joints. They do leak. They're supposed to leak, and it is not a scary thing that they do leak. It's a good thing they do leak. Well, let's go take a look. Okay, let's show go. Me. So, how We're in the uh, West Inspection Tunnel at Bagnell Dam, and uh, this structure is designed to leak. People think that leaks are a bad thing in the dam. Actually, they're a good thing in the dam. Uh, the dam was built in sections. They're called 40-foot monoliths, and each section has an expansion joint. So as the concrete cools in the wintertime, those joints open and the leakage increases. We have a drain system throughout the dam that takes care of that leakage. And, uh, and we can actually measure the leakage, get some idea if the leakage is increasing or decreasing. And uh, it's all by design. Uh, each section is uh, independent of the other. And so we monitor that and inspect that uh, on a quarterly basis. And uh, we believe we have a very sound structure. Well, Alan, it's hard for me to believe we've been down below the water, 
we've been above watching the water come through the gates, and now we're actually on top on the bridge that goes over Fort Wilmore Lodge, and these are the cranes that lift the gates up. Right, we use these cranes for a lot of different things, but one of the things we do is we raise and lower flood gates mm -hmm. with the lifting arms above us. Uh, the, the gates operate on chains, and we lift those chains with these cranes. The cranes can travel the full length of the dam, and most people think they're uh, some sort of house on stilts. It does, you know, and of course the reason why you brought me up here was because I naively asked you, just what are those buildings? What are those things? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they have a 70 ton capacity, lifting capacity each, so they can pick up a lot of weight. And as I was telling you earlier, the gates to me almost look like garage doors. And you were saying, well, they kind of are, you know. They, they are. They pivot on big bearings, and they, they're called a tainter gate style. And they pivot on bearings, and the water runs underneath them as we lift the gate vertically upward. And you were saying that there are actually every so many years you have to check the gates, and you will lift one of them completely up at a time and let the, they let the lake come through, and it's really something to see. We do uh, what's called wide open testing every five years, and it's a federal requirement that we have as part of our license to full open test each gate one time fully open every five years. And it is spectacular to watch that gate clear the surface of the lake, and uh, it will pass almost the volume of water that we saw just a moment ago coming through all 11 gates. And that is just really hard to picture in your mind what that must look like. Although I have a better idea now, <laughs> having been on the catwalk above the gates right. to see the water come through. Well, let's go back down and you can tell me a little more about the history. And what is the longest period of time that the gates have been open in recent history? So we'll go take a look and talk a little bit more about the flooding. That's okay, happening. let's do it. Okay. Oh, I grew up downriver, and that was always one of the folklore stories. That, oh, there's catfish at the base of that dam big enough to eat a man. And, and I always heard they can't get a diver to dive because the, the, the fish are so big. That's not true. It's, it's great folklore, uh, but there's no truth to it. And when I first came here, one of my first jobs was working with a diver to do an underwater inspection. And uh, I had to, you know, I got to ask you this question. And uh, he said, first of all, after I get 40 feet deep, I can't see anything anyway. He does his inspection by field. And he said, secondly of all, I wouldn't be crazy enough to take this job if I thought there was that big a fish. They do see some, some big catfish, but nothing that's going to harm a person. Yeah. Uh, there's no carnivorous fish in this, in this lake. The other one of the folklore is that there are people buried in the concrete in the dam. Uh -huh. And the old story that was told was... Uh, as they were pouring concrete, a guy fell in, and it was cheaper to pay off his wife than it was to pull him out and stop the work, and, and uh, that's not true either. We, in fact, we don't have any documentation that I've ever found of, of anybody being killed on this project. I'm sure it probably happened, but I haven't seen it, and we've done a lot of borings where we've, we've core drilled through the dam for different projects. We've never found any bones yet, so if I ever do, I'll tell you, but <laughs> anytime we have the floodgates open, we'll have the plant at full generation. Okay. So we'll be producing all the power we can. The flow through the turbines is the maximum we can put through. Okay. So right now that's about 35,000 cubic feet a second. Uh, as, as the river comes up, we do a little bit less um, just because we have, as the tailwater rises, we have less capacity to run water through. Okay. Um, so. That's about 230 megawatts, 230 million watts of power that we're producing around the clock now. So it's a good thing for our, our system. It's, it's economical power, uh, and it's very clean power because we're not burning coal, creating emissions. So, uh, and, and it's a renewable energy. But it just needs to rain again, and we have more fuel. So that's why hydro is such a good thing. Alan, I gotta tell you, I've absolutely loved enjoying a summer with the gates being open and watching water. And I'll be a little disappointed here in a few days when it's time to start closing them. But of course, this isn't the first time, and it won't be the last. Right. We uh, we do work closely with the Corps of Engineers at Truman Dam to to regulate and control floods as much as we can. And you might be disappointed to see the gates close. There are a lot of people downstream that'll be really happy when that happens. Not a lot of flooding going on downstream, but there's some at low-lying cropland, so those people will be very happy to see those gates closed. And as much as we've enjoyed seeing them open, this is not, there's been times in recent history where they've been open much longer. Right, we've had, uh, we've had times when we've had gates open for almost three months, 